your life has it's a very interesting life you've led a young life but still you've you've gone through various stages which yes. people take a lifetime uh, to go through those experiences you've gone through that very early in life that's right um to understand what happened to you what you did why you did i need you to go back to the 90s simply because i think that must have been the most formative period of Correct. your thought process and what happened uh, when you turned uh, very critical against uh, the political establishment um, so let's go back to your life in kashmir in the 90s to understand where you came from what happened uh, what was childhood like so go back to the background i mean i grew up in a broken home in a conflict zone so i think that's not easy for anybody uh especially for me watching my mother you know get beaten up and face domestic violence on a routine basis uh it certainly makes you angry it makes you very sensitive to issues of injustice or perceived injustice uh so you are what you can call me i mean i would i call myself a precocious politician uh it's never too late for politics in india but we were in some kind of hurry to you know uh enter politics very fast so i've done a kind of internship in politics a 3 months internship in politics during which i learned and unlearned a lot of things uh but going back where it started from why i was so sensitive to issues of injustice or perceived injustice uh is because of what you witness at home what you witness um, all around you and of course the power of narrative i would say i mean before we come to the power of narrative tell me a little bit about your locality where you lived what were your neighbors and uh, you say that your mother uh, faced physical abuse yeah. uh, at the hands of your father yeah. um she was a government servant if yes, i was yes. mistaken she retired yeah. from government yeah. service so at that time did you and your sister you're the only two sisters yes, right yeah. did you seek help did your mother seek help she was mm. an empowered woman yeah. at, at the workplace yeah. um why did she take the beating uh, was there any family help hmm. could you give me a little excerpt uh, we lived in joint family and it was in uh, downtown srinagar which has been the hub of insurgency and it's also where you know the kashmiri pandits i mean before i was born or before i could uh, come to my senses uh, there used to be a lot of kashmiri pandits so there used to be a lot of this uh, narrative around ki all the good teachers are gone like you know uh, the, because the pandits, the, the pandits were the used to be the good uh, the better teachers so i think we never had a uh you know our, the, the the generations before us they were really good at math really good at grammar and they owed it to those people so it was a lot of like we've seen encounters uh we've heard firing this that one incident where my sister she was holding a, a pot of curd like a clay pot and uh, there was a firing there was a shot gunshot uh, in the background and it just fell from her hand uh and to this date you know like all of my uh, friends whenever we are at a party diwali party say for example there are crackers uh so my friends they don't get stunned i get stunned very easily so i think pretty much everyone in kashmir suffers from ptsd and when you combine that with if you, there are problems at your own home uh there weren't a lot of institutional mechanisms as you know the pwdva act it has come only in 2005 the domestic mm. violence act which is a good act mm. uh but it has come only in 2005 it wasn't there before so there weren't a lot of mechanisms uh for us to you know seek help uh but uh, you know there is this paradox uh, of sorts almost uh, where women who are uh, submissive and they are dependent on their husbands and they are homemakers uh they actually uh, you know uh, i don't want to undermine their struggles or anything but they actually have it easier in a sense because when you are working you are expected to work and then you are also expected to work at home and then you are also expected to contribute financially so it's like having two full time jobs so my mother while she worked at the hospital she was in the essential services she's never taken a day off but at the same time when she would come home so she would have to do all of this and then also put up with other things so i think that uh, i use, i discuss this with my cousins quite often that you know why are working women facing more domestic violence that's something of a you know phenomenon um, because so you saw your uh, mother being uh, uh, pardon me from saying for saying this but you saw your mother uh, being beaten by your dad uh yes in fact like i remember one incident like when she confronted him over something um he hit her so hard that she left uh, you know in her left ear she lost uh, she partially lost hearing uh and that is a very traumatized uh upbringing and then you have a trauma response to everything so the moment you see some injustice you just cannot stand it you cannot stand back you need to intervene so even if it's some kind of you know uh someone is beating up some re- somebody else on the street side you just can't hold yourself back you 
want to intervene in that thing because it's so personal to you, you know. Mm. Uh, so you develop that kind of, uh, whether you call it sensitivity or trauma response, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. And uh, you talked about uh, your neighborhood. I've been to that neighborhood. Yeah. I've seen uh, those locked homes of Kashmiri Pandits. Right. And, um, and uh, I've also known friends who left from that area and their home was then occupied. It Some, some kind of similar stories I've heard from family members who uh, occupied homes of, you know, partition victims. I mean, right. those who left uh, India and went to Pakistan yeah. and their homes were given to. Yeah. So those kind of stories and uh, it's probably wrong to draw parallels because uh -huh. Pakistan became another country. Right. Here it wasn't another country. Yeah. Here it was a Internally refugee. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was. So it, it's a complicated uh, kind of a story. Did you uh, have uh, friends who were Kashmiri Pandits in your neighborhood? No, not really. We grew up in a pretty homogenous uh, setup because by the time we came to census, I think it was uh, a completely Muslim population. But my uh, parents' uh, generation, yeah, they talk about it a lot. They had uh, pundit friends, but uh, no, we didn't. So 